Our lectionary reading from the New Testament uh, this week comes from Ephesians chapter 1, and I'm going to shorten the reading a little bit and just read from verses 3 through 10. So listen to and for God's word for you this morning. Praise be the maker of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. Before the world began, God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless and full of love. God likewise predestined us through Christ Jesus to be adopted children, and such was God's pleasure and will that everyone might praise the glory of God's grace, which was freely bestowed on us in God's beloved, Jesus Christ. It is in Christ and through the blood of Christ that we have been redeemed and our sins have been forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor, favor given to us with perfect wisdom and understanding. God has taken pleasure in revealing the mystery of the plan through Christ to be carried out in the fullness of time, namely, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together in Christ. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. In the English... These seven verses are about four sentences. In the Greek, it's one sentence. <laughs> Paul is a classic run-on sentence writer. I imagine him writing it just feverishly overtaken by the goodness of God and all the things happening in his life and in the church and in the world and just overwhelmed with the goodness of God. And then I have a second picture in my mind's eye because these were letters written by a person then physically delivered to a community of people in a region called Ephesus. And I have a picture of this person reading the opening lines of this letter and trying to catch his or her breath reading this to the church. This is really a poem extolling and praising and honoring and recounting all that God has done for God's people. It's a lyrical doxology, if you will, an expressive uh, exaltation that calls us to reflect on God's amazing blessings to us in God and in Christ. Paul here isn't attempting, I don't think, to create deep theological ideas, which I know for many of us as Presbyterians is where we like to live. But Paul is expressing gratitude, worshiping God in the ways God has worked in his own life, worked in this community of the church in Ephesus, and he is worshiping God with his words. One commentator I read this week put it this way, this is the excess of the language of worship. The words flow in an endless stream of praise and wonder, as if meant to lift the very heights, lift us, lift, lift us to the very heights of God's presence. So with that in mind, I want to read the passage a second time to help us open up to the words, to the depths of the richness of these words, and not simply hear these beautiful words, but possibly through the work of the Holy Spirit, connect to God directly, noticing where there might be a word or a phrase that connects with who you are, or a question you have, or something you're wondering about in your life. So hear these words again to you, about you, for you, and for everyone and all things, as Paul ends this poem. Hear them and simply notice a word or a phrase, you don't have to overthink it, or an image that just calls to your attention this morning, as the psalmist says, maybe where the deep in you is connecting with the deep in these words. So hear them again, and then I'm going to ask you to respond. 
Together we praise the maker of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on each of us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. Before the world began, God chose each of us in Christ to be holy and blameless and to be full of love. God likewise predestined each of us through Christ Jesus to be God's adopted children, and this was God's pleasure. In fact, God desires that everyone might praise the glory of God's grace, which was freely bestowed upon each of us in God's beloved, Jesus Christ. It is in Christ and through the blood of Christ that we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor given to each of us. It is given with perfect wisdom and understanding. God has taken pleasure in revealing this mystery the, of the plan of Christ to be carried out in the fullness of time, bringing all things in heaven and on earth together in Christ. Just real briefly, what words or phrase or images was your attention drawn to in that reading? Shout them out. Be full of love, redeemed. What else? Adopted children. Adopted children. Chosen. Chosen. I couldn't hear it. Say it again, Emily. Every blessing. Every blessing. Come on, give me three more. <laughs> You're allowed to talk back to the pastor at this moment. Come on. Christ, okay, thank you. Together, praising God. I heard one from the choir. All of us. Peace. All of what you mentioned and all that is in here that we didn't mention, all that God has done and all that God is doing gave and gives God great pleasure. I was reading this passage this week. That was the word I was drawn to. Not that your answers are the wrong answer. Let's be clear. But I have the microphone, so you're stuck with what I was focused on. All of this gave God pleasure. Even before the world was created, as Sarah so beautifully illustrated, God took great pleasure and joy and delight in blessing you and all of humanity with every spiritual blessing from the heavenly realms. God enjoys blessing God's children. God enjoys you. God enjoys being enjoyed by you. So immeasurably generous is God's favor. God's generosity is one of super abundance, giving in excess, spilling over and going beyond our expectations. This is a really weak analogy, but you know when you get a gift, it often comes from a grandmother or a grandfather, and they've gone above and beyond what they should have done, either in the cost that they paid for it or the extravagance of it, and you feel a little bit uncomfortable receiving this great gift from this person. This is the way God is. God lavishes and showers us with love and kindness and mercy setting us apart to be like God. And what does it mean to be like God? To be full of love. And God does all of this out of the simple and pure delight and joy of creating and giving and being generous. Some years ago, I was reading in my morning prayer time from the Spanish mystic, John of the Cross, and he referenced this, ver this verse that Paige and Malia read for us from Proverbs 8, which describes the wisdom of God, which I think is the force that created the world, and the wisdom of God is personified as a woman, as perhaps it should be. That was a little, you know, nod to our women in the group. Come on, people, wake up this morning. 
the wisdom of God personified as a woman who has always existed and co-created the world with God. And listen to these verses again. When the foundation of the earth was laid out, I was a skilled artisan standing next to the Almighty. This is the personification of wisdom. I was God's delight day after day, rejoicing at, the being in, at being in God's presence continually, rejoicing in the world and delighting in humanity. I was delighted every day, playing before God all the time, playing in the world, and my delights were to be with the children of the earth. As I read this, I get this childlike playfulness of the Trinity. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, huddled together, perhaps arms around one another, shoulders, shoulder to shoulder, gazing out upon the world, playfully and imaginatively creating the world with overflowing, superabundant love and joy between them, spilling out as a creative birthing force in the world, simply delighting and enjoying one another as the triune God. And as they enjoy one another, it spills out and makes this beautiful world, and it makes each and every one of us. Amen? But before everything, all the birds, trees, air, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, was created. There was one unique creation that delights the Trinity most of all, humanity, the children of the earth, siblings, sons, daughters, you and me, the image bearers of God, the one with God's divine DNA in each and every one of us, created by and in Christ to be holy and set apart and full of love, containing every spiritual blessing that was Christ's. Oh, what great joy, delight, and pleasure this gave and gives God. The writer of Proverbs said it this way, I was delighted every day, playing before God all the time, playing in the world, and my delights were to be with the children of the earth. Let me just ask you this direct question this morning. Have you ever thought that God delights in you? When God gazes down upon you, sees you in your work, in your family, in your struggles, in your beautiful moments, singing, serving, whatever it is you do in your everyday, ordinary life, God says, that is my child. And look how amazing they are. Look at all the ways they are full of love and being my image and likeness and bringing light and love into this world. In that same morning prayer time as I was reading John of the Cross, he went on in reflecting on Proverbs 8 to say these words. The father of lights is not closed-fisted, but diffuses himself abundantly as the sun does its rays. Without being a respecter of persons, wherever there is room, God does not hesitate or consider it of little importance to find delight with the children of the earth at a common table in the world. It should not be held as incredible then that the promise of the Son of God be fulfilled, that the promise that the most blessed Trinity will come and dwell in anyone who receives this love. God, friends, is not closed-fisted. God is open-handed, and God delights in dwelling fully in you and in me. God desires to fill all people our family members, our co-workers, even our enemies with the beauty and glory of God's own presence. And God has taken pleasure in doing this. And the arc and aim of history is that all people and all things on heaven and earth will be brought together in this love. 
Friends, we have been chosen out of the deep joy and delight of good, of, of, and goodness of God. And the mystery of the eternal and cosmic Christ has been made known to us. And we are part of a greater cosmic plan to bring all things in heaven and earth together in Christ. We are image bearers of God, shining and reflecting the divine light into the world and among all people. And this love of Christ that fills us ought to compel us, not out of obligation, but out of the same joy and delight to share it with others. We all have this love in our hearts, and it only lives in us when we give it away. Father Richard Rohr puts it this way, we all have a unique divine DNA, an inner destiny, as it were, an absolute core that knows the truth about who you are, a true believer tucked away in the cellar of our being, an imago day that begs to be allowed to be fulfilled and to show itself. Friends, within each and every one of us, even the people that drive us crazy, there is a unique divine DNA that is begging to be fulfilled and to show itself. So I ask you this morning, where do you sense perhaps God stirring in you, longing in you for that unique divine DNA of love in you to be birthed, to be fulfilled, to be shown more brightly in your, in your sphere of influence? And perhaps who has God placed in your life to share and show this unique divine DNA of love? Those of us who have been graciously adopted into God's family, been made holy and blameless and filled with this love and shown the mystery of Christ, we have an invitation to illuminate the divine DNA in ourselves, in others, and in all of creation. And as Father Richard said, it is begging to be allowed to be fulfilled in you and to show itself to others, our neighbors, our coworkers, our children, and even strangers have a unique divine DNA, an inner destiny, an imago day that be is begging to be allowed to be fulfilled and to show itself just like us. So friends, here at EOPC and here in your individual lives as you scatter back to your neighborhoods and workplaces this week, know that you go from this place as one who is deeply enjoyed by God, and desires to have that enjoy, joy awaken in you and be shared with others so that everyone might give praise and glory to God's grace at work in us and through us. May it be so this morning. Amen.